Now that we have three kids, we do a lot of laundry. And by we, I mean my wife, because it's 2022 and we're progressive like that. Besides folding the laundry, the most time and labor intensive process is transporting the clothes up and down the stairs. Our house layout requires us to take a very long route from the bedrooms down to the laundry room across one and a half flights of stairs because we have a two story split level floor plan. In large scale manufacturing, long walk patterns like this are considered very wasteful. So engineers use a specific tool to visualize the problem and make improvements. Enter the spaghetti diagram. See the resemblance? A spaghetti diagram is typically used to trace the movement of a person or thing through a process. In my case, I'm interested in the walk pattern I have to take to get my clothes into the washing machine. I time myself taking somewhere between 45 seconds and a minute to make the trip, not counting the time it takes to gather the clothes in each room. If I could eliminate this walking time by putting in a laundry chute, I could save myself, my wife, around five minutes a week. Okay, that doesn't sound like a big deal, but there are other things to keep in mind. First, there's no more carrying heavy loads down the stairs, which is a potential safety issue. Also, it gets my kids excited about helping with the laundry chores because putting clothes down a chute is a lot of fun. Plus, it's just more convenient because you have dirty clothes right there when you need them come laundry time. It would just simplify the whole process. It's true that saving 45 seconds every time we do a load of laundry isn't a big time saver for us, but in manufacturing, this is a huge deal. We do laundry about five times a week, but if you were doing a specific process five times an hour or minute, I mean, shaving off a few seconds here and there could really add up. A lot of manufacturing sites run 24 seven continuously. If you could save a few minutes every time you run a process, that's more product you can crank out per hour, less labor you need to hire to run those processes, and potentially less equipment you need to invest in to meet your demand. Spaghetti diagrams help us to visualize the paths we follow to complete some task. Until it's been drawn out, we often don't realize how much time and energy we're wasting just pushing things around. This diagram can inform you how to lay out some work area. It can influence your decisions on how to organize people or processes. It can help optimize how you get your work done and so much more. If you're interested in learning more about spaghetti diagrams and their applications, you can search more for lean manufacturing Lean Six Sigma, or Research Industrial Engineering. To see if putting in a chute was even feasible, I first poked a hole in my laundry room ceiling and stuck a small camera inside to see what was in there. After thinking that I had a good shot at fitting a chute, I sawed a hole in the ceiling and subfloor to measure out the space I had to work with. I decided to build a chute out of 1 16th MDF that had a whiteboard coating on it to reduce friction. For professional installations, you'll probably sh see chutes made out of metal sheet, like what an air duct is made out of. However, I don't have any of the tools to cut, bend, or weld sheet metal, so I went with the wood option. I used some 2x2s and 1x3s to reinforce the corners and make it into a solid box shape. I would have liked to make it a little bit bigger, but I was constrained by the size that I could fit in my wall cavity, so it ended up being 8 inches wide by 6 inches tall. I designed it to be narrowest at the top, getting slightly wider as you progress downward so that clothes won't get stuck anywhere along the way down. I had to slightly reposition the drainage vent pipe and a flexible vent pipe coming from the exhaust vent in the laundry room. Both were pretty easy to move so I'd have enough room to drop the clothes into the cabinet. Once I had all the pieces made, I fit them into my cavity and screwed them into the ceiling slash floor joists. After that, I just had to build the collectors at the top and bottom of the chute and put the cabinetry back together and make it all seamless. I took the opportunity to paint the cabinet and add some floating shelves so we didn't have to continue living in 1996. Plus, we needed a place to store our detergents now that our old storage cabinet would be filled with dirty clothes. Alright, let's give it a try. I'll put some of my clothes down to test it. After getting everything in and painted, I set my kids loose on it to stress test it, and everything worked great. We've been using it for over a week now and haven't had anything get stuck. Overall, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned something useful. I'll see you next time.